few points if you'd like to address them, or we can go straight to questions. Well, I think what I do want to do is I want to reiterate some of the things that were said here by both of the esteemed guests today, that we invite guests. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when uh, Senator... A little sensitive on that, right? When <laughs> Justice Anderson said that it's important, you know, and he went through some of the issues with voting and, and the malfeasance and the... Uh, uh, if some of those kinds of things, that, that's really critical. It's critical that we get registered. It's pretty critical that we count everybody. It's critical, you know, each of those items have extremely high priorities in our minds in the legislature. Um, and if, for instance, the restore the vote is what we call it when people come out of incarceration. And it's a little bit fuzzy because I, I don't know that how many people in the audience would even know who is eligible to vote. Because you can't vote, you can vote in prison if you're not a felon. But when you get out of prison from being a felon, can you vote? No, you can't. Can you vote if uh, you were out on parole? No, you can't. Can you vote if you're on probation and you're a felon? No, you can't. How many people know that? And when we talk about voter fraud, that's usually the problem is that people go to vote when they're not eligible, but they don't know it. And to commit a felony, you have to knowingly do it. So if many of these people who are captured, and, uh, you know, and that they have said, oh, I thought I was able to vote, uh, they're generally, they're, they're pled down to some lower uh, misdemeanor, which, uh, um, you know, they're not a felon. So when some people say that all these felons are voting, well, they're voting unintentionally. And we have tried and tried to get even the Department of Corrections to do a better job of, of bringing people out of incarceration and telling them when they can and can't vote. But if you're on probation for a couple of years, uh, you kind of forget that. Uh, and also the, uh, the issue of uh, maybe uh, non-citizens voting. Uh, from the Secretary of State, he said that there was one instance last uh, in the last election, I think this was, uh, uh, sorry, not the last, it was 2016, that was a person who was not a citizen was caught voting. And that person said she thought that she could vote when she got a green card. So it was not intentional. Now that was pled down. It still was uh, you know, not legal to vote. And, but when you talk about the number of people that are getting caught uh, voting when they're ineligible, it's an extremely small number. Uh, when people say, well, I voted, uh, you know, I know someone who voted <coughs> twice. Well, that doesn't happen. Believe me, you will get caught. The Secretary of State has a system that uh, runs voting files from the entire state. In fact, they even go into other states in some cases where a person has registered here but was registered in another state and they find out if someone voted twice. So you, there are no real instances of people voting twice that get away with it. Um, and there's there's stories about it where the mother voted for her daughter who was down in, in uh, uh, St. Olaf. Uh, the mother voted to add some tea because she wanted to be sure that her, her uh, daughter voted and they were caught. It was unintentional to commit a felony. So. It, it didn't make the felony level, but they were caught. Um, and uh, you know, in, again, in trying to get people to register, I've got a bill that pre-registers 16-year-olds when they get the driver's license. Today, you can register if you're 17, but will be 18 by the next election. That's uh, it's a system that we've had for quite some time. Your name is suppressed; doesn't show up on the voter roll until you're 18. So in the next general election, if you're 18, your name shows up if you registered while you were 17. I'd like to see that done at 16. And then when people get their driver's license, they can automatically be registered to vote when they turn 18. And I'll even say I've gone one step further. I've, I've signed on to a bill that allows 16-year-olds to vote. Now you may say, well, 16-year-olds are too young to vote. They don't know anything. But you know what? There, I know a lot of 16-year-olds that are very, very savvy. And you know they run elections in their high schools where they're just as savvy as a lot of people that go to the polls and vote. And also, you know what, people that are 
year-olds, 17-year-olds that are not interested, they're not going to go vote. So it's not a big threat to me to have a 16-year-old vote. Um, voter purging, which uh, Justice Anderson mentioned, there was an effort in the nation to collect all of the voter files from all of the states by this election commission uh, that was initiated by the president, and the secretaries of state refused to comply. Uh, one of the things that's in the Constitution is that states control their own elections, and the states all, uh, I'd say most of them, did refuse to comply. I think there was a few that actually participated, but uh, the rest of them either filed suit or just refused to comply with that, that order, and the whole idea was dropped. But I had heard before that there was a that there was a secondary operation that was going to happen on that, and that's that the federal government was going to try to preempt state um, voter registration so that they could tell states who to purge from their system. And we certainly wouldn't have wanted that, where, where we want to purge all the Jim Carlson's or someone like that. And, uh, and I do have a story to tell about that. Uh, you know that there was a Jim Carlson that ran for president of the United States in 2012. You may not have voted for him. Not too many people did. But uh, a lot of people... Was it you? And if, what, if you went onto the, the uh, internet and you searched for uh, presidential candidates, there was one that was Jim Carlson and they had my picture. <laughs> <laughs> they had my Twitter feed on there. And they had, we managed to get them to take down the picture, but they had the Twitter feed on until election day. Now Jim Carlson was a real guy from Duluth, and as I tell you a little bit about him, you'll remember him. He was the guy that had the head shop up in Duluth, all the last place on earth, and he was selling bath salts, and he was running under the, uh, uh, the uh, yeah, what was the party, I can't remember, it was one of the marijuana parties, and uh, uh, in Egan, we had 20 vote, 20 ballots that were spoiled because people voted for Jim Carlson for president and another candidate at the same time. And so they were, that was an overvote. And every time, those of you that have been election judges know that you have to, you have to um, account for every ballot that gets an overvote. And it just so happened that my legislative assistant, her mom worked at the city of Egan and said, yeah, that happened 20 times with your name. So that, you know, we can make mistakes like that as well. Now, um, so I'm going to jump in. Yeah, at this that's. Point. I think we 